like many folks, we were um, in anticipation of this ICD for a long time, and um, we had candidates that had waited for it, so we were sort of really ready to go when it was approved and when uh, uh, production uh, came up to speed for us. So once we got the ICD in our, ICD in our hands, um, uh, we had a number of implants, and uh, again, they, they went well. The team was well prepared with the new way of putting it in, and I think that all worked well. Anesthesia, our staff here in the EP lab. The way that I've integrated this into my own practice is it's a, a full-on additional option uh, that I can present to patients. Like most implanters, the subcutaneous ICD isn't uh, taking over a lot of other implants because a lot of other uh, folks require pacing right now or BIV devices, biventricular devices, so uh, they're not candidates. But for those people who are young like our patient uh, uh, today is, who are uh, potentially in need of ICD therapy for decades, um, it is a, a very good option and I introduce it as such. Um, for other folks who are very active, for those who um, uh, we think may fracture lead from the types of activities or work that they do, for those who are at risk of infection uh, or you really don't want to have in anything in their vasculature over the long run, dialysis patients uh, who have uh, arterial venous fistulas that already affect where you can put things and they often have uh, either current or previous um, intravascular uh, devices in place or, or catheters in place. Um, and even women, I think, are sort of interested in this idea when I present the option of having an ICD that uh, sits above the pectoralis muscle versus one that is a little bit more cosmetically pleasing because it's sort of concealed uh, on the side. Women have actually taken that up. So um, young people, people who have reasons for me not to put anything inside the vasculature, and even for cosmetic reasons, as long as they don't require pacing, it's a very reasonable option and I treat it as such. So the criteria are, uh, first of all, uh, do they uh, need pacing? If they need pacing, I can't con consider the subcutaneous ICD right now. Um, if they uh, have reasons for me to avoid uh, putting things into the blood vessels or into the heart, previous infection, maybe even artificial uh, prosthetic valves or I'm worried about other reasons to cause uh, infection or um, uh, promote infection uh, potentially. Uh, those who have um, cosmetic reasons uh, for uh, not wanting something up in the prepectoral area who might prefer something in a concealed area. So once I get beyond, if they don't need pacing and they just need a prophylactic single chamber ICD, I think that opens up the, the uh, opportunity to consider which one works better for them. Everybody who's implanted a lot of devices and, and seen their devices through over years uh, has dealt with problems relating to vascular access, problems relating to faulty leads, issues uh, of lead extraction, uh, which is uh, potentially the highest risk procedure that we have to do and one that we would love to avoid doing whenever possible. Um, I think those of us who uh, feel that way uh, were really very open and welcoming of an idea of an ICD that doesn't require placement of a lead in the vasculature and inside the heart. So it um, uh, opens up that possibility of something safer for patients, uh, potentially that works just as well. Our job, especially on a prophylactic ICD, is to try to prevent a problem, and we don't want to add to the potential list of problems just with the nature of the implant. So I think subcutaneous ICD offers that advantage for, for patients. I think for the physician, uh, to be able to offer another good option is always a, a welcome thing. An option that's really not hard to learn. It's not a difficult procedure to do. Um, if you've got a lab that you do lots of procedures in, it's, it, it, it easily uh, conveys, I think, with just a little bit of attention to the changes that are needed. Um, I think that it is very interesting that we may have an ICD that uh, uh, already uh, requires minimal fluoroscopy and, and, and potentially may require no fluoroscopy during the implant. And uh, for those of us who've had fluoroscopic exposure, we love anything that allows us to do something like that with no fluoro, so the lack of radiation is good for both patient and physician. The post-procedure time frame is interesting. 
Uh, there's a little bit of discomfort, just like there is with a, uh, a, a standard ICD. But what's interesting is that whole concern about uh, the possibility of lead dislodgement or uh, pneumothorax that you tend to look for after you do your implants, that's not part of this uh, landscape. And I think that's a very welcome thing for physicians. The hospital uh, certainly uh, likes options for patients. Uh, this is something that I think sets hospitals apart. The fact that a patient can come just like our uh, previous patient was looking at options. Um, if he can go to one hospital and realize that all the available technologies can be delivered at this hospital, that's an attraction for him and others that follow him. Um, and uh, I think when it's coming to heart care and a competitive marketplace, um, that's a very necessary thing that a hospital can embrace technology and be able to deliver that. Um, our hospital, I think, has done a great job of getting us set up to implant this ICD very early on. And as I said, the team here in the lab uh, uh, took it uh, on wholeheartedly and moved very swiftly. And even from our first implant, we were uh, up and running uh, very, very briskly.